Let's go. Oh, yeah, baby. This could be the best true freshman class yet at LSU. Shh. I don't want to wake up my dog, Booker, okay? Okay. Anyway, Eli Ricks, B.J. O'Jolari, are you kidding me? He had the play of the year, and ironically, it happened on Vanderbilt's only touchdown. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. And, of course, we're chatting the GOAT, the future GOAT, Eric Gilbert. Thanks to everyone that got us to 1,000 subscribers. And, of course, thanks to everyone that has been tuning into our live streams. Let's get right to it. Let's go! Film study! So, I want you to take a look at where we are in the game. LSU is down by 10. 12.38 left to go. Mississippi State has all the momentum after LSU punted them back to football. And they get a nice four-yard game. The LSU Tigers are sad. They're downtrodden. Glenn Logan not being able to play this game. I mean, just look at this. A dead sideline in a near-empty Tiger Stadium. They're trying to get hype. People, I need a defensive player to step up and make a big-time play. Who is that going to be? Oh, yeah. How about a five-star true freshman by the name of Elias Ricks? High point the football, Elias. And look at this swagger. Got the visor on. You got the few fans that are there fired up. And look at this. Look at this. This is DBU, baby. This is what I'm talking about, Eli Ricks. Tell him you're ready for the big stage. I love everything about this rep. Step for step, it looks as if he was the actual receiver on this play. How many true freshmen could turn their head that smoothly and high point the football. This is Patrick Peterson level stuff, people. This is Dante Jackson. This is Christian Fulton. And it's Elias Ricks. Let's go. I was so fired up because LSU needed some much needed juice. And I know that didn't sound all that smooth. But anyway, look at what happens, okay? Get a nice run on first down, and then I believe on the next play, you get the touchdown to Terrace Marshall Jr. And yes, I know LSU ended up losing this game, but this is why I had Eli Ricks as my number four football player on this LSU team before the season began. The PFF grades back it up. Everything about his play so far backs that up. So, here we go. It's fourth and four, running this thing at full speed. And another great play by Elias Ricks. Not every play is going to be a swagged out interception. And this showed growth. Here we go, Mississippi State game. It is third and in. True freshman Eli Ricks is right here. And this is actually a very similar play to what Vanderbilt ran. Hey, guess what? Teams look at film, and they try and pick on youngsters. Now, remember, in the Vanderbilt game, this opposite corner is Derek Stingley Jr. So if you're going to attack a corner, you're not going to attack Derek Stingley Jr. You want to find ways to beat Eli Ricks. So that drag route you just saw in the Vanderbilt game, guess what? It happened at a similar spot on the field, this is why Vanderbilt decided to run this play. See? Because there, you notice the difference? But this right here teaches me, I say teaches, shows me that a young man, when he plays bad technique, it is sometimes hard to fix it. So, Vanderbilt saw this play probably on film, and they decided to run it because of what happened here. So notice it's a drag route. This is a very similar mesh concept. You hear that word all the time, where this wide receiver gets into the path of the defensive back. And the reason why they rub it here is because they want Elias Ricks to go this way so they can have more room. What you're supposed to do in this situation, 
Remember, it is third and ten. You want to do whatever it takes to keep this guy in front of you or at the very least beside you. But notice what happens here. He goes underneath him because, as we'll discuss later with Derek Gilbert, Eli Ricks is used to being athletic enough to catch anybody or to make this play. It's not every day you're going up against a sniper like K.J. Costello who could just drop this into a bucket. And as you could see here, Eli Ricks, instead of just running with this guy, he tries to jump. And <laughs> just look at the vertical leap here. He actually almost tips this thing, but you got to know time and score and place. Third and ten. Just tackle the guy in front of you so you force him to go for it or punt on fourth down. Instead, you give up the touchdown. Now let's go back to the Vanderbilt play. So what do you know? Vanderbilt decides to run a variation of mesh. Number 86 is trying to rub Eli Ricks all the way down to the inside to create separation. To be honest, this throw is not all that good. But notice what Eli Ricks does here. He doesn't play the football. He makes sure that he can catch up to this guy, which of course he does, and then impedes his progress to make the catch. This is very, very good stuff. And yes, there is some separation here, but this is a drag route and man coverage. Eli Ricks is kind of beaten here. But instead of just turning around and trying to play the football, which would be difficult to turn your head and make a play on it, he just runs with him and at the very least makes this catch difficult whenever he brings this into his hands. See that? That's just great ball skills, great awareness, same exact spot on the field. You get Vanderbilt off the field on fourth down. That is big time playing. That is called learning from your mistakes, and that's why Eli Ricks is already one of the best cornerbacks in college football. Now, let's get to who I believe is the best true freshman on LSU's team. Let's go. I have never seen a better pair of rush ins at LSU, and I know, I know it's only two games, but LSU has something special with Ali Gay at one end and B.J. Ojolari at the other. And that does not include Andre Anthony having a good start to the year. Even Trevez Moore, I've seen him get some really good pass rush snaps as well, number 49. So, this is good if you're an LSU fan. you got two corners on the outside that can play lockdown coverage, and you got two ends that can get home. This rep, albeit it comes on a touchdown, is going to knock your socks off. And if for some reason you're an NFL evaluator watching this right now and this is the first time you've seen B.J. Ojolari take a snap, you're about to be blown away. But anyway, I know defensive line talk can get a little boring and a lot of you are here to see the Eric Gilbert breakdown, but let me show you just a little something real quick. So... In the first clip, we saw B.J. Ojolari do what's called a stunt to the inside. Now, stunts are a lot of a lot of people can interpret it different ways. There's a twist stunt where he goes inside and a defensive tackle goes to the outside. There's just shooting the B gap like the last play was and an outside linebacker coming on a blitz. But there is nothing that makes a defensive coordinator look better and there's nothing that makes a defensive coordinator happier if they don't have to call anything. If they can just get good rush with their defensive ends. That's filthy. That is filthy. And it doesn't look like it from this angle. But this pass rush move, I feel like I'm watching Von Miller in the flesh. B.J. Ojolari, the grandson of an African prince. I want you to watch this. I want you to bask in this glory, LSU fans, because this guy 
is playing football in Baton Rouge for at least two more seasons and eight more games this year? Are you kidding me with this pass rush rep? Now, like I always say, the best way to determine if an offensive line is playing good or bad is by looking at the end zone camera. Lucky enough, ESPN provided us the end zone camera, and I want you to watch this pass rush rep in full speed. Now, LSU has what's called a race car package in the game, where they do bring in Andre Anthony to rush from the defensive tackle position. So now they have their four, who they feel, their four best rushers all on the field at the same time. It's third and goal. Obviously, Vanderbilt has to get the football out quickly for a touchdown. And even though Vanderbilt was able to complete this pass, and it was a good throw by Ken Seals with decent coverage from Cordell Flott, just look at this. Don't look at the touchdown. Just watch this rep at full speed. That's unreal. That is unreal. That is unreal. So, it's about to get really technical. Only my diehard LSU fans are here, okay? Only my diehard 1,000, hopefully soon 2,000 subscribers are still with me. Because this, I have been waiting for this day to see an LSU defensive end dip the corner like this. Now, there's so many different athletic variables that goes into being a great defensive end. But Steven Ruiz at USA Today just wrote a great piece on Jadavian Clowney. And long story short, Jadavian Clowney gets a lot of pressures, but he doesn't get a lot of sacks. And after Ruiz's film study, he learned that Jadavian Clowney doesn't have good dip. He doesn't have good dip in the hips, okay? It's kind of like that. Country Wayne joke. You got too much dip on your chip. Anyway, this is what he means by dip in the hips. It's a weird thing because turning the corner as a defensive end, you got to have something called hip bend. And BJ Ojolari has it so naturally. And I know this isn't Laramie Tunsil or pick any uh, Anthony Munoz here at left tackle. This is a Vanderbilt left tackle. But this rep is the most unstoppable rep for a tackle. And let's go ahead and break this down. So, BJ Ojolari actually fires off pretty high right here. But there is a reason for that. He wants to get this def- this offensive tackle extended. And you're going to see him dip. Turn this thing like... And, and you see defensive ends in, in, in training drills twist around a hula hoop. And the reason why coaches do that is because they want them to turn this corner as tightly as possible. Now look, this tackle is fully extended. This is exactly where B.J. Ojolari wants him to be because what he's going to do is actually get underneath his left arm and right into this hip pocket. Now look, this is what he waited for him to do. And this is not what you're supposed to do as an offensive lineman. He extends this arm because, let's run back, the reason why he extends his arm is because B.J. Ojolari fired off so high. This is by design. And to have this as a true freshman in your pass rushing arsenal is pretty freaking ridiculous. So once that arm extends, he's going to dip his head underneath it because now this tackle is off balance. And look at what happens. Look at his body. Now, for most of us watching this video, his body is completely at a 45 degree angle now I was a pass rusher in high school as you could tell I'm very fired up when I see this I tried as hard as I could to learn how to do this and I just simply don't have the athleticism or the natural bend I was lucky enough to play with a lot of good athletes that ran four fives that bench pressed 350 and could do all these things but they just didn't have natural hip bend this is crazy 
that a human being can force this tackle to be this off balance and to have that dip. You see that dip right there? And look at what he does. Look at how upright he is after doing that. Doing that little rip and dip move. And also, notice, you still have a long way to go to get to this quarterback. So, that's why this angle has to be tight. It has to be really tight to get to this quarterback to hopefully disrupt his pass rep. This is Von Miller type of stuff. Von Miller, to this day, is the best at the rip and dip. That's what my coach called it. A lot of people have different terms for it. But just the fact that a human being can turn the corner this fast, and notice we can debate if that is a hold. That is a hold, people. A horrible hold. If he's not held, that ridiculous pass rush rep prevents a touchdown. And notice... The football is delivered quickly and on time. And the coverage is actually good. This is a game-changing type of play. And to have a player at one of the premier positions in the modern-day era of football, which is a pass-rushing defensive end, you can call it a weak side end, strong side, whatever you want to call it, to get this type of rep from a kid who is not even old enough to buy a cerveza, is ridiculous. This is easily the best play I saw from the Vanderbilt game. Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. And this is why I say that. Because this translates. You can do this to nearly every offensive tackle you see. Because it's deceptive. It's fast. It's violent. Just look at that. Just look at that. What I want you to do is after you watch this video, and some of you might have been drinking, and some of you might not be in a, I guess you could say a mode, I want you to go outside and see if you can do this. Just go outside and see if you could tilt your body around a corner. You can do it around a tree. When I practiced in high school, I would, you know, there was a, there was a circle driveway. I would turn my body and and try and curve it like a race car to try to be able to do this it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous and and this is what you want this is for this i mean look at this he's held if he's not held he is hitting seals before he throws his football this shows you how important it is to have this player and this is as good as it gets. This gets you paid. There are, what, I believe 25 defensive ends that make $10 million more, ten million or more a year. Four or five of them healthy could do something like this. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling that a human being could do that. So, you guys have seen it. I've seen it. It's pretty clear uh, that Eric Gilbert is not a blocker. And uh, you'll see it here just from this rap. It's going to turn the volume down. I love you, Brad Nessler and Gary. But Eric Gilbert right here. Uh, and they pointed this out on the broadcast. And, yeah, I mean, obviously not a good blocking rep there, but... You know, what do you, what do you expect? So, obviously, that comes with the tight end position. That's why, you know, on some of these videos, you know, Eric Gilbert had so much hype. He's going to catch 80 balls and score 12 touchdowns. And, you know, with his athleticism, I I don't doubt it. But guess what he does? This is why you got to have him on the football field. He does things like that. He runs a corner route like freaking Terrell Owens, and catches the football at its high point and braces for the hit, brings it on in. That's what I'm talking about. But on the following play, Miles Brennan did a great job still delivering this under pressure. 
I mean, and obviously this was the Jare Jenkins breakout game. You know, you saw it right there. I mean, I, I don't remember if we got a replay here or not. But this is the Jekyll and Hyde effect. You get him as a receiver, but this is a stunting defensive tackle, so a very powerful player. This was by designed by Mississippi State. He does a push-pull right here, pulls Eric Gilbert basically to the ground, and Miles Brennan still delivers a strike while getting crushed. And yes, the ball was behind him, but that is a great throw there by Miles Brennan to get the football out to Jare Jenkins. Now, of course, Miles missed some other ones. So that's why you're going to see growing pains because in high school, Eric Gilbert didn't have to worry about doing things like that. So two very negative plays, albeit blocking plays. I mean, it's blocking plays, for goodness sakes. That's not what Eric Gilbert is here to do. So, you know, that does become a little bit of a liability if you're, you know, calling plays for the LSU offense. Obviously, Miles was still able to deliver this ball. This is obviously one of his better throws of the year. Definitely one of his better throws during the Mississippi State game. And obviously, a lot of you remember this next play here by Eric Gilbert, which is another reason why this guy needs to be on the field. And, you know, five-star tight ends, the highest-ranked tight end, the Gatorade Athlete of the Year, just throw it up and let him make a play. Just throw it up and let this guy make a tackle football play. So here we go. If you've watched our Miles Brennan film study, you've already seen this play. This was easily my favorite throw by Miles Brennan. The score is still 0-0. And I want you to see what Miles does here. So first thing, if you want to watch the full film study, he steps up into the pocket into what was an open space here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and run this play at full speed so you can see it for yourself. Boom. I like that, Eric. Good, strong finish. So, obviously, let's go back. Miles Brennan. The key to this play was him stepping up. This is exactly what Ed Orgeron was talking about. They mentioned it this week in the press conference. Russ Calloway put in a lot of work with Miles Brennan. This is what's great about Eric Gilbert. If you have a superstar tight end that is so good at getting open in the middle of the field, in part because the safeties have to play back because you run a 4-5 at six foot six. what a freak athlete Eric Gilbert is, that's the good thing when you step up in the pocket. You don't have to be mobile. Just create some separation and some plays with your legs. Look at Eric Gilbert, smart. Sits right here. Just good football there from a true freshman. But the finish. I want you to see this finish. Hey, G, let's go. Boom. So one guy, two guys, three guys. And he drags them forward. It was a bad spot. Dragged them forward. Four extra yards. That is what I am talking about. Obviously, we talked about the running back being up here. It's five wide. And Miles Brennan can easily see here that this is going to be zone coverage. The defensive backs are off the line of scrimmage, so he knows that he's going to have time to throw this football. And what he's going to do is he's actually going to throw this football to Eric Gilbert, and he does the whole way. You can see by his his head position and this is Terrace Marshall Jr. right here. So, like I said in the Miles Brennan film study, he actually locks onto his guy from the get-go. You simply can't do that against better defenses because they're going to figure out where you're going with this football. you got to go through your progressions. But, and we'll come back to this exact slide, remember this, because Eric Gilbert ran such a great route... He was able to sit in this spot of the zone. This is really good football IQ from the freshman. We'll get back to here. Now, remember this spot. Now, if you missed the Miles Brennan film study, you got to go through your progressions here. It's not open yet. There's pressure. But you also have to understand pass rush geometry. If, if a defense is 
only going to rush four. That means that there's always going to be an open gap for you to step up into, especially if they're getting pressure like this. So remember the first Eric Gilbert throw? And this is obviously easier said than done, and it takes time to develop this type of pocket presence. Miles Brennan still had the same alleyway to step up right here. And if he steps up right here, he can run for a first down or... He can hit a wide open John Trey Kirkland and just catch and get right here. But lucky enough, this is Vanderbilt. Lucky enough, Eric Gilbert runs a really good route. But it is what happens after this that will drive a coach insane. Now, notice where he caught the football right here. He instead gives ground. And this just shows his brute athleticism. He's still able to push back to about a yard from where he caught it. Let's go ahead and bring it back to where he initially caught the football. Let's run this rep at full speed. Boom. Catch the football. And like we always say on this channel, fall forward. Justin Jefferson was so good at this. Catching the football, getting upfield. Now, in Eric Gilbert's defense, and if you actually go watch his high school tape, there are so many plays of him catching and just being able to outrun every high school defender across the field and for a touchdown. So his natural reaction is to do that. And like we always say, Game reps are your only reps. Practice reps do matter. That's not what I'm saying. But until you actually get in the game when you're in your mindset, it's just natural for him to do this. But even against Vanderbilt, it's the SEC. You just can't run around guys like that. And this is where he initially gets hit. Now, I want to ask you a question. And you guys are smart. I hopefully attract smart LSU viewers. Eric Gilbert, who is six foot six, two hundred forty pounds, runs a four five. Earlier, we saw how he could drag tacklers. Do you think if Eric Gilbert catches his football and just leans his way, do you think he gets two yards here? Absolutely. And that is a first down in the red zone where the field shrinks, where it becomes even more difficult to move the football through the air. And like I said, the route is perfect. Look at all the separation he created. Look at how he sat in this pocket right here. You know, especially with the yard markers being on the lines themselves here, you know under any circumstance, you've got to get to this line. Or, at the very least, because it's third down, if you catch it and you just get tackled and your forward progress gets stopped, let's say you get stopped right here, a yard. That means you can go for it on fourth and one. But instead, he catches the football and immediately takes two steps in the opposite direction. Like I said... This is not me calling him out. He is used to being able to run around guys. Guess what? If he catches this, he's so powerful to even break through this guy. And if it's Eric Gilbert one-on-one -on -one against a safety, he's probably going to score. He is that special of an athlete. But doing this, look at where he initially gets tackled. Four yards from where he initially was. It is a feat of athleticism to, just because he even got back to about right here. And obviously it was helped out by his offensive lineman not giving up. But look, he actually got back six yards from the first down marker. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive. I get so many questions about true freshmen and recruiting. So I wanted to dedicate an entire film study on LSU's top three true freshmen. I know a lot of you were excited to see Jaqueline Roy in this game, the defensive tackle out of U High and BR. I'm I'm also excited about that and 
I hope Jacoby and Guillory gets healthy. I really like him. Shout out to Alexandria, Central LA, where the speed limit is 75 to get to BR. I love that. I really do. So, I know that was very nerdy. But, come on. You know you enjoy the 75 speed limit. By the way, if you go 1 MPH over 80, they are going to pop yo ass. Every single time. So I, that's a warning. You see, that's what you get on this channel. You get very valuable information like that. So, yeah, I mean, this is obviously very important stuff. And look, BJ Ojolari, grandson of Nigerian Prince Twins 7-7. Seven, seven. That story is really good from Brooks Cabueno, the uh, of the advocate. So, and yeah, he was teammates with Eric Gilbert. That's crazy. Marietta is just wild. Wild. Um, but yeah, what was it? Dansby Swanson and that famous actress Julie Woodward. They showed that graphic. Uh, but anyway, that's besides the point. You know, you can really only... I mean, these, guys, these kids are still teenagers. So that's why I'm saying I don't want this to be... This is not critical. All three of these guys have been ridiculously productive. Heck, Eric Gilbert actually led the team in receptions against Vanderbilt. So he's doing a lot of good things. I mean, you know, you look historically at the tight end position, even at the NFL, you notice this, a lot of tight ends aren't hardly ever good as rookies. You know, last year, TJ Hawkinson Everyone made, a big, everyone made a big deal about his first game, and then the rest of the year he was just kind of meh. That's because this sport, in that position in particular, you've got to do more stuff than any other position on offense. No other position requires you to catch, block on the outside, block on the inside, block inside linebackers while also running deep. I mean, Eric Gilbert has so much on his plate just jumping right in with no spring where he had to overcome injuries. So the fact that he's this good already shows you really good things. He's eventually going to be what Kyle Pitts is at Florida. And we talked about Eli Ricks earlier. We talked about, obviously, B.J. Ojolari. And, um, you know, I think Marcus Dumberville is going to have to play. Uh, Marlon Martinez. All those guys. So... We'll see how LSU does it. And by the way, this fake punt was really cool. <laughs> but, but yeah, LSU's going to play Missouri, and hopefully, um, LSU's going to be ready to play Florida here in a few weeks. So, yeah. And what's funny is LSU actually called out this fake punt, and they were still able to get it. So they're ready for it. They 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 just didn't stop it. But if you're up twenty-seven to seven, like I said. Playing bad teams early helps you get all these kinks out. Kinks is such a weird word. Anyway, we got to do a subscriber shout out. Uh, this is from my friend and yours, Matty Dukes, who has, is that, that's Jamar Chase burning AJ Terrell as his profile pick. I like that. Miles looked much better. Uh, he made better decisions and moved in the pocket and also looked more explosive with John Emery in the game. Let's be honest, those play action fakes looked a lot better um, with John Emery um, at running back because he helped establish that run. Joel makes a good point here, and and I think that's why the, the coaching staff showed Drew Brees in particular because, you know, Miles Brennan's not all that fast. Brew, Brew Brees. Drew Brees succeeds even though he does not have the mobility that Aaron Rodgers has. Brees is good at stepping up in the pocket. Hopefully we see more of that from Miles Brennan. Our boy Jonah loved those mosaic cards at the start of our last video. Yeah, man, we're going to be giving out uh, some cards. Um, I'll be starting a card channel on YouTube hopefully sometime in the near future. This is my first year doing the whole sports card, collecting and some flipping. And uh, it, it's it's been okay. <laughs> I'll put it that way. It's 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 a lot harder than, than what's on the surface. Willie makes a good point here. He must learn how to look off the safety because he will not get away with that against Florida and Alabama. And if you want to... And, um, you know, this is a good point from Willie. You know, you saw it for yourself. And we talked about it. 
in our last episode, Tory Carter in the game, well, you know, if you put him in the game, you obviously have to sub the tight end out or move Eric Gilbert to receiver. Tory Carter gives you an extra blocker, and essentially he gives you a fullback, and Tory Carter had a superb game against Vanderbilt. One of my higher graded offensive players, and you see Eric Gilbert make another nice catch here. You know, with Tory Carter in the lineup, you can't do that. You can't run a quick slant to Tory Carter like that. That's that's the downside. The the good side of it is that he can be a lead blocker. When defenses see him on the field, they might automatically key in run, which could open up the play action pass we showed that in the film study so you know Tory Carter's a productive player and by the way he has shown the ability to catch now he's not going to burn you like an Eric Gilbert might be able to do and that was actually a really good blocking rep from AG2 and this was the uh the graphic I was talking about uh this is Dansby Swanson that's Eric Gilbert and this is Joanne Woodward of LSU so, so yeah, I I think um, I I I do think Tory Carter deserves a few more reps, especially if LSU is going to try and establish the run. So we'll we'll see what happens going forward, guys. Thank you so much uh, for all the support. I appreciate it. There's Eric Gilbert again making plays, and uh, yeah, it's great. Look at Joanne Woodward, 1957. Kai Omega. I had a lot of Kai Omega friends um, when I was at LSU. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you watching these deep film studies. If you want to send me a message, you can comment below. Or, of course, you can always hit me up on social media. At Carter the Power. It is Power Hour LSU. Boom! Boom, boom, boom. Ugh. I still haven't gotten those lemon pepper chicken wings.